Okay, in this video, we're going to examine uh, a concept called similar right triangles and the geometric means. Now, we're going to answer two questions specifically, or, or investigate two different things here. And that's how do we create similar right triangles by drawing something called an altitude? Okay. And how do we find the lengths of the sides of a right triangle using the concept of geometric mean? Okay. Now, to get started with this, let's just take a quick look at this right triangle. Now, remember that a right triangle contains a 90-degree uh, angle in it, right? And the you can label each of the sides of the triangle specifically. For example, the side that's exactly opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. The shorter side of a right triangle is called the short leg. The longer side is called the long leg. Okay, and you might remember from algebra, really probably back in uh, elementary school, that you can find the lengths of the sides of a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem, right? So, Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem basically says this, that if you take the square of the short and the two legs, so a squared plus b squared, you will get the square of the hypotenuse, which in this sense we'll call small c. Okay, so let me just write that in there real quickly. We'll call this whole thing small c. All right, we'll equal that. Now this works really well if you have two of the sides so that you can figure out the third. But what happens in this particular case where we only know the length of the hypotenuse? So what we would get would be a squared plus b squared would be equal to what? 6 plus 8 or 14 squared? That's not going to help us solve for one of these two lengths. So we're going to use something called the geometric mean to help us solve the um, the sides of these particular triangles. Okay, this particular triangle, but also some of the smaller triangles that are involved here. Now, in order to do this, though, I want to take you through how we create similar right triangles by drawing something called an altitude. Now, the altitude of a triangle, of a right triangle, in this particular right triangle, is when you start at the 90 degree angle and you create a line that goes perpendicular with the hypotenuse. It doesn't go to the midpoint or anything. It just goes perpendicular from here. All right? You'll notice I got a 90 degree angle there, 90 degree angle there. Now, essentially what I have done is I have created three new, well, three total similar triangles. And let me, let me show you how that happens. Now, the big triangle, ABC, I'm just going to break it out over here. And I'm going to draw that big triangle. Let's do that like this. Make sure I'm not off the page there. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of sketch it out over here real quickly. And we're going to call that triangle A, B, C. And the right angle was at the B, right? So that's the big one. But look what else we've created. We've also created a triangle right here that's also a right triangle. It's a little bit smaller. Okay, and actually to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to call this point right here, I'm going to call it D. Okay, so let me draw this a little bit smaller. Okay, now let's see if we can break this out so we can turn it sideways here. Looks like the 90 degree angle is where the D is, so I'm going to write that as D. Looks like the top right, of the short leg is B, and it looks like the end of the hypotenuse is C. Okay? Now look what I've done. I've got triangle ABC. It's the big one. I've got triangle BDC. Just follow the same pattern. And then I've also got a third smaller triangle here that also has a right angle in it. So I'm just going to draw the third one. I'm 
mama bear, papa bear, baby bear. If you want to look at it that way, you know, big, middle, small. Let's go ahead and label this one. Now, again, the, the right angle looks like it's at the 90 degree part. So we're going to call that D. Looks like the top of the short leg is A. So let's call that A. And it looks like the top at the end, rather, of the hypotenuse looks like it's B. So we'll do that. So this would be triangle A, D, B. Now here's what the interesting property is. By drawing this altitude, which I'm labeling H, by the way, and I'll show you why, because I don't want to mix it up with this A over here. So we'll call it the height. The altitude is also known as the height. All right. Let me put that in there. These three triangles are similar. So I just draw the little similar sign in between there. And if they're similar, that means that the ratios of the sides are all proportional. That's really, really important, right? So by creating, by, by drawing the altitude of the larger right triangle, I've created three similar right triangles, which means that the area of the sides of the lengths of the sides, again, are all proportional. And that's really huge because that way we actually need less information to be able to find the A, the B, and the C. Okay? So let's go back up here and see if we can find that. Now, according to, look, we need to now start talking about the geometric mean. So let's just see what that means. No, no pun intended. So according to our information up here, we can actually start labeling what we know. All right? So for the large triangle ABC, we know that this side is B, this side is A, and the long hypotenuse is 14, right? 6 plus 8. For the middle one, we know that the long leg is 8, we know that the short leg is H. And we know that the hypotenuse is A. For the small one, we know that the hypotenuse is B. Don't get these two mixed up. This is B. We know that the short leg is 6. And I'm just going to make it look like that so it's pretty distinct from there. And we know that the long leg is is H. So let's see if we can start drawing or writing down some of the proportions that exist here. Okay? Similar proportions. Well, according to this, I know that 14, the hypotenuse, is to the long leg A, for this triangle. So 14 is to A as a is to 8 on the smaller triangle. Now, I chose those deliberately. Why? Because when I do that, I'm able to, I, I want to have one, a similar variable or a similar letter in the denominator of one of my ratios and in the numerator of one of my other ratios. When I have them opposite like that, this is called the geometric mean. Okay, now look what I can do with this. I'll do cross products, right? You can start solving for the A here. I get A times A is A squared, and that's equal to 14 times 8, right? So that's what, 80 and uh, 16, 16, 32, so 112. Which means that I take the square root of both sides, and I get A is equal to the square root of 112. Okay, so I would just go up to here, and I would label that as the square root of 112. And if I can reduce that, I, I should, you know, uh, you shouldn't leave this as, as a large uh, number like that. So you're going to have to remember how to reduce your radicals. Now let's see how we do that. Um, what you do is you do a number tree of 112. So let's do that real quickly. That would give me, what, 2 times um, 56, right? That would be... 2 times uh, 28. Let's keep going. That would be 2 times 
times 14, which is 2 times 7. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that would be 4, 8, 16. So this would be equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 7. And then the square root of 16 is just 4. 4 radical 7. So A, going back up to here, A is equal to 4 radical 7. Okay, so we have now figured out that particular side. Now let's see if we can figure out B. So can we go back up to our similar triangles and can we create a ratio where the B is in the numerator and the denominator of the, um, of the ratio, okay, of the similarity? And now if I look for where the Bs are, there's a B here and there's a B here. Okay, so let's see if we can use those. It looks like I can say 14... The hypotenuse is to be as b is to 6. And sure enough, I've got the exact same situation here. I've got the numerator and denominator each containing the letter that I'm looking for, geometric mean. So again, I'll get b squared is equal to 14 times 6. And 14 times 6 is what? 60, 24, so 84. Take the square root of both sides and you get b is equal to the square root of 84. Let's do the same thing and reduce the square root of 84. You get 2 times 42, which is 2 times 21, which is just 3 times 7 which means I get the square root of 4, 2 times 2, times the square root of 3 times 7, or the square root of 21. And that gives me 2 radical 21 is equal to b. All right, so let's go back up here. And again, put in... 2 radical 21. So I was able to figure out the length of the B, the length of the A, and then the length of the hypotenuse by using the geometric means. Now we can check it with the Pythagorean theorem and see if it actually works, right? So according to this, if I have A, which we said was 4 radical 7, and I square that, plus B, which is 2 radical 21, again, square that, that should be equal to the square root, uh, or square, rather, of 14. Now let's see if this works, all right? When I square 4 radical 7, I get 16 times 7, okay? When I square 2 radical 21, I get 4 times just 21. And when I square 14, I just get 14 times 14, which is what, 196. Let me just check that to make sure. 14 times 14, what's 16 carry the 1, 5, yeah, 4, 196, okay? Go ahead and do 16 times 7, and I get 16 times 7 is 42 carry the 4, so 112 plus 4 times 21 is 84. And let's see if that adds up to 196. And sure enough, it does. 112 plus 84 gives me 196 is equal to 196. So it actually worked. Okay, so briefly, let's just go through this one more time so you get the idea. I know this is a little bit of a long video. You can create similar right triangles by just simply drawing in an altitude to any right triangle, okay? When you have that right triangle, break them down into the three similar triangles that you've created with that altitude. The big one, the medium-sized one, and then the small one. Remember to orient them so that they're all facing the same direction. 
Once you've done that, then use, the, these are all similar triangles, then use the concept of geometric mean to see if you can find the missing variables. And the geometric mean needs to have the variable again in the denominator and the other uh, ratio needs to have it in the numerator. Solve for the variable and then you've got it. Do the same thing with the other missing variable and you're all good. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you. This actually covers Common Core Standard. So Common Core CC SS for high school geometry, specifically in the similar right triangles, and I think this is actually, let me just check this really just to make sure, but I think it's standard A2. I'll go back and check that for you. Okay, hope this was helpful.